Okay, lovelies, this is Chloe, or uh, Chloe Oracle, Oracle Chloe, however you want to say it. I'm sorry, I'm having an ADD behind. Staying on topic is really hard for me, but I have just had such a wonderful time at Fairy Worlds. Unfortunately, my older son came down sick, and now my husband just came home from work. He's sick with whatever my other boy has, what my boy has, and even I have a little bit of a scratchy throat. So aside from having a wonderful time, we evidently picked up something as well. <laughs> Um, so highlights, awesome, wonderful music. Please go online and look at their lineup. It was totally fab. The people we got to see, I actually paid for a workshop that I didn't get to attend because it was for around four, uh, let's see, I think it started around three or something. And we did not end up staying that late. Um, what with, uh, Eric being so sick, he had fever, really bad runny nose. Uh, he had thrown up during the night uh, after Omni on Saturday night. Um, we got to stay through that. And that was one of the main bands we had come to see. Um, but there were so many others that I think I'd seen some of them before. And uh, that that one guy, he his it's definitely a musical performance, but it was also a puppet show. It was like a totally different experience. If you ever get a chance to see that one guy, do see him. <laughs> because you will not regret it and you will at least have had the experience if nothing else even if he isn't your cup of tea I think many people would uh, enjoy it even just one time uh, so um, yeah the uh, the, ba the bands I did get to see I got to see Woodland only for the opening usually we miss the uh, opening ceremonies and with the spiral dance that they do at the very beginning of, of fairy worlds every year and the theme this year i don't know if it's always themed or if it may be the same theme or whatever i've talked to a couple people and they say it's somewhat different a little bit occasionally and this time they had a dragon theme going on it was really cute uh, they had a, a chinese dragon that they were carrying around the parade and spiral circle and everything it was awesome and um they had a cool dragon dance dur happening during the um, kind, of, kind of consecrating a space and and pure giving the sage smoke and whatnot to the area they were going to be doing the dance and the worlds in general. Um, really awesome. I do have film of that and I probably will just post it up by itself just saying this is the opening fairy worlds spiral dance. Okay. I didn't film the whole whole thing but I got a good chunk of it at least 16 minutes of it. So if you don't want to hold watch the whole thing I totally understand but you'll get to see some of it what it's like um and the stage area uh then it was Cinder, thunder crow they were the all the bands I saw were awesome okay there wasn't one that I was like oh my god come on let's get to the next guy Abney Park um we did not stay for the last one of the day at 10. My boys were quite tired by that point. And um, with our sensory issues, um, I can only handle concerts outdoors, but sometimes I can only handle amplified, amplified sound for so long. And that's the same with my older boy too. My younger boy was like, I can feel the vibration in my vocal cords and deep into my chest. And I'm like, that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> it's how well you can handle it is the issue. Um, I can't handle it at all in an indoor space, but I can handle outdoor events. So um, we got to listen to that band. I'm going to try to make this a little. Again, you can see the list online. Yeah, there's too much blur. You won't be able to see that. I'm sorry. Uh, it's E-U-Z-E-N. From a distance, they were a really nice lullaby. <laughs> And we really didn't go to sleep truly until after their set was done. But we did go to relax and lay down and just chill there. Um, and I've got some squirrels and, and birds bickering back there. <laughs> um, so on Saturday, we, we got to see Rogue's End. That one guy that I mentioned, he one man band, totally hilarious and just Show, just show, really. It's not just fan. Um, Gelem Disku, he was playing a, a hurdy gurdy and he was also running a workshop on the instrument itself and how to use it as kind of a drum box or something. Um, there's a description of the workshops on the website as well if you want to look at that. He had a really awesome accent. <laughs> uh, and then Luke Arbogas. 
we got his music was awesome. And then finally, Omni. Now, I think... No, now that I think about Luke Arbogast, I'm not sure that we heard him. There was one band that got replaced with Martine Kraft. That's who we heard instead. I don't know exactly what happened, but he didn't get to play that Luke Arbogast, I think. Um, I don't know. There was one of these bands that didn't get to play. There was just so many. There, were, Everyone we did here was awesome. and But, but we did figure out that Luke, uh, Martin Kraft was the one we got to hear for the replacement band. And we weren't going to be able to see them on Sunday. So that was actually kind of great for us. Um, sorry that everybody else missed out on that other band. I don't know if they ended up playing Sunday instead because of whatever happened. Um, right. And then there was a village stage. And that's where Martin Kraft was playing on oh martin Kraft and fred hill <laughs> were supposed to play saturday at the smaller village called the village stage sorry the smaller stage called the village stage I to say. Uh, so that was kind of fun at least they were ready to play that day so it wasn't too much of a difference and then you know we didn't get to see woodland because they were the very very last act of the night for sunday so, um, yeah, but what we did see, the, it was really awesome music, very cool performances. Um, the kids area uh, had, um, instead of being Neverland that we were accustomed to seeing from years previous, I guess the people who ran that area had retired and they haven't gotten, they had volunteers to run different, uh, two or three different booths. Things and they did have a small puppetry act, but it wasn't like before. Um, it was still fun. There was still some stuff to do, but my boys were just not as drawn into it as previously. And they're kind of techie and really into video games. So, um, yeah, the, the only thing I think they were a little tempted by the quiet area tent. Um, it was a big green tent. It had really nice, comfy... Um, there was like a cushion seating area, some blankets on a really nice surface to chill out. They also described it as like an art scene tent. So basically a qu quiet time areas for people who are feeling a bit overstimulated or needed a quiet place to rest for a little bit, but still nearby. Um, that was good. I'm glad they had that. Um, and um, let's see. I went to workshop on Saturday morning at the in the yoga area. They had yoga on Saturday and Sunday, but I elected to go to the uh, chanting. Uh, let's see, let me find that one. Chanting Circle Songs of the Forest. The guy who was helping run that and guide us through that was really awesomely mellow and such a good soul. Um, there was not one attitude voice to um, bear <laughs> in the whole thing. And, and the yoga was right nearby. And I can honestly say that I do not feel that we took away from their experience. Um, we had a really nice blended group. And um, even with some of the odd vocalizations, we felt instinctively compelled to, to voice during parts of different chants. It was, it was still very in sync with the energy of the nature space we were in. Uh, so I hope the yoga group didn't mind it too much because um, it was like a hop and a skip right there. <laughs> uh, just turn your head and you're, we were looking at each other. Um, and yeah, uh, there were three work, free workshops a day, Monday, Saturday, and Sunday. There uh, were some paid workshops as well, about three each, actually. Three, four. Four, one, one, two, three. So on Saturday and Sunday, they had a few paid workshops. And then they also had something called Academia Delatoria. Delatoria. So this was all about weaponry and learning different skills. There was one on rapery system of uh, Vincent Savageau. I probably have said that name wrong, and I am so sorry, but there was a rape. Uh, repair class you know the swords kind of repairs self-defense 
system using the cane or parasol. These are not in order. I'm just letting my eyes go where they will. My ADD brain is all over the place. This is about as organized as you're going to get. It's very close. Uh, the 16th century knife defense from the system of, I want to say, Achille Moroso. Morozo. Um, so some some self-defense, some weaponry uh, workshops. Uh, there's even one called Sacred Geometry in Sword Design and Hermetic Principles. Um, that was those classes I've just mentioned were Friday and Saturday classes, but not in order, kind of out of order in writing. And then there was four more classes on Sunday. Um, the, another 16th century Italian sword system, and then Italian knife defense, and then 16th century Spanish rapier system uh, with Destreza. Sorry if I'm slaughtering people's names. I'm just not very good at them. And then another rapier system with that original one that was offered on Friday. So, yeah, there was like something for almost everyone. <laughs> when it came to workshops and things like that. Some of them were free. There was a few paid for workshops. Again, I missed mine that I paid for, but couldn't be helped, had a sick child. And in the Fairy World's family area, and here I was looking for signs for the Neverland, but anyways, still found it. Um, Yeah, they still have a little uh, thing in the flyer. And again, they did not have copies of the event schedule or flyer. Thus, you did not even have a map unless you found the info booth or will call or one of those other areas. Walked in and took pictures. I was just trying to find my one um, picture of the... Where did it go? Where did it go? I can't even find the one that I had of the map. Oh, here it is. A solo. Again, I'm not sure. There, maybe you can see a little bit. That was the map. I mean, it was a nice map if you got the picture, but it is kind of tiny, and now I have to, like, widen it to see the details. Yeah. So, yeah, a really fun time. A few little quirky things. I'm not going to keep going off on about that, that stuff. All right. So I'm at 12 minutes. All right. I won't take very long. I had seen this lovely little eatery. It's really just a dessert. But, um, and as much as I love yummy food, I really focused on just a couple different vendors. Um, I have a sensitive uh, stomach and some food issues now. Uh, so I found some that I could eat. And one of them for dessert wise was this really cool Festy Fudge. I hope I'm saying it right, but it's part of their slogan is fudge with attitude. And here's the website in the corner. Hopefully you can read that. And Ken and Sarah Harris are the lovely older couple that runs it. And here's their contact info, info if you're interested. Evidently, you can order um, from their site. It says notes and favorite flavors. Uh, something on there. There's info, festifudge.com. Lovely. Evidently, they do quite a few. They do some booth events. I, should, I don't know how many, but it seemed like they had a really professional setup and yeah i ended up getting just a plain milk chocolate fudge just because i was planning on sharing with my kids and i admit i didn't get to them until that morning when i was leaving they happened to be open and it, they keep the fudge chilled it's really cool um and they have a nice little packaging as well it's very yummy and i still have some since we're saving some for eric for when he feels better um from Crescent Moons and Gifts, Crescent Moon Gifts, Myth, Fantasy, or sorry, Fantasy, Myth, ma and Magic, and Tea. They're based in Tacoma, Washington, and they are having a Fall Fest um, in September. Uh, I'm hoping to go, or at least, if not to the fest, at least to go visit their shop. I ended up getting our lovely Joy Seekers uh, uh, by um, Arwen Lynch's Fairy Tale Lenormand. I had been eyeballing it for a little bit, and I like 
getting it from uh, more small businesses. Not that they're that small. They're actually a fairly uh, well-known shop in the Northwest. And I got to say, I was quite surprised with how tiny um, are when you're your Lenore is. And the tin is absolutely gorgeous. It has, you can tell it's Lisa, uh, Lisa Hunt's artiste uh, drawings and detail work on it. It's just so adorable. Um, and the book has a foreword from, uh, many of you might know her if you're into the Lenormen, from, oh, let me find her. I don't want to say her name wrong. Where is it? Come on, come on. Donnelle De La Rose. She did the foreword. And I really liked her suggestion that even though this is a, a, Lenor a Lenormand, that with the theme of the fairy tale and the detail work that Lisa Hunt has done, you could read it as an oracle as you're getting better with learning the Lenormand style. And I do tend to read things in an intuitive oracle bent although I do respect systems. Um, I also picked up, and yeah, I know, this is just showing all the little lovelies I picked up, and I was totally drawn and could not walk away from this lovely pendulum piece. I loved, this one had the one piece I felt like I wasn't going to be fumbling or possibly breaking. Um, so I grabbed it. It's a little leaf style. I um, believe this middle section has quartz pieces, but I am not sure what the stone is on the bottom pendulum piece and the holding piece, but I love the design. And he had so many rich colored, more colorful ones than this. Um, I believe this is his card, but let me check. I want to make sure if I have. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is his card. Pendant Manus Bro. Fairy Artist. Wishmaker. Hank. Crafted fairy wands and magical items. He is based in Eugene, Oregon. And I'll try to show this card, but it is a little bit dark. And he had so many awesome things. Wands, the pendulums, uh, fairy door, or little houses, that kind of thing. Or fairy doors or houses. Could have been a bit of both. Uh, and so much more. So much more. So if you're interested, I would definitely check him out. Um, Hedon Manus Bra, and he's on Facebook, and that is evidently, he's on YouTube. If you really want me to, say in the comments, and I will add his contact information um, down in the description, because his pieces were really lovely. I also, I didn't buy from all these places, but I really, oh yeah, here's a picture. These were so cool to see at Fairy Worlds. I hope you can see that she makes these really awesome fairy wings. But there were really so many different kinds. This was just one. These were a little bit pricier, but they are so cool in texture, beautiful in action. She has some that you can just slip through your fingertip and have towards your fingertip, like attached to you and do it that way. Or you can get these ones with the rods built into them to give you an extended... Um, movement and dance flow, you know, and yeah, uh, really liked her, it's Firebird Faye Couture, um, firebirdfay.com is the website, uh, you, if I got much of the dancing, you'll probably see some of these out and about, they were a little bit pricey. There was one booth, which I should have gone back, <laughs> that had these awesome butterfly wing styled. Um, these were definitely lovely and gorgeous, but they were a little bit out of my price range. Um, but if you really love that style and you're looking like you're doing belly dance or any kind of artistic movement and dance work, those would be an awesome addition to your uh, clothing spark. Uh, Bliss Shop was another one I was very drawn to, and I, they were not open when I was going back because I, uh, I wanted to hit them the last day so I wouldn't get my stuff dirty or whatever I bought from them. But they had some really cool stuff, and I really like their card. It has some cool little details into it. So let me pull that in. and You can check them out online. 
They're on Facebook. <coughs> They're in Grand Pass, Oregon. Clothing, crystals, jewelry, local artwork, and worldly treasures. They're a bohemian boutique. Uh, believe in your dreams. Make them a reality. This lady had the such awesome jewelry and a few other things as well. Jewels by Olivia, custom-made jewelry, definitely unique pieces. And it's jewelsbyolivia.com down there. You can't read it very well. I really liked her work. I just can't have heavy weighted pieces on me. And none of them look too, too heavy, but I just wasn't sure. <coughs> and I didn't have a really a lot of time to look. All right. I... These people were open, but I could not make up my mind. And then she let me know that she's going to be able to start doing custom orders in October. This is, <coughs> um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this. Faitham Fortuna. I'll show you the other side. You can read the other side. I really love the effect of her business card. I could not walk away. I had to at least get her business card, if not the actual. She had drinking horns. She had uh, headpieces. She had leather work. Um, really cool stuff. And he, she's on Facebook, Pinterest, and possibly Etsy, if, I, if that's what the E stands for. So here's her work, and oh my god, she had the coolest finishing on her horn pieces, and her work in general was so detailed and lovely. I fully intend to, when she's taking her custom order orders in October, I fully intend to order um, a horn, a uh, drinking horn from her. Uh, I want to get one in her purplish blue look that she had, but uh, she had one with a stag and a, and a rune on it. But I would really love to get a Celtic cat. Um, she had one that I almost just picked up just because I really loved the tones of it and the color. Um, it had a rabbit with a fox. And oh, it was so gorgeous. And so many other designs. The artisans and crafters that you can meet and, and just buy from were so awesome. And it was just, I couldn't make up my mind between two or three of them. And I just couldn't take up any more time trying to make up my mind. So I just thought, you know what? I'll custom order later. So, all right, this is way long enough. Um, oh, I did want to give a shout out. This booth that I got this fire from had such awesome metal and leather work. They had like bracers and cool armory type uh, fey, uh, El elven leather armory, all kinds of awesome stuff. Um, I didn't get to buy... Uh, but again, it was one of those things where I couldn't make up my mind. And actually there was a couple pieces I would have bought for my sons, but, um, I ended up deciding, I believe they're going to be at this hex, hex and fest. I grabbed this. It's going to be, oh, at the ISIS Oasis retreat center. My husband is actually connected to, um, one of the temples of ISIS, <laughs> uh, used to be anyways. Um, and that, hexenfest.net, uh, here's the info on the back. And you may recognize a few of these people, especially Serena Knight. Uh, I know her. I met her. <laughs> and so much more. Gorgeous artisans, community workshops, delicious meals, a pool and a hot tub. So I probably won't be going to this, unfortunately. Uh, but it is a three-day weekend event. Please check out the website, see if you might be interested in. They're, they are evidently going to be there, or at least they're advertising for it. I just really admired their work. I just could not make up my mind. And when I would have taken my sons through to maybe pick something again, my young oldest was not feeling well. Okay. Uh, uh, and one last thing. I found this really cool um, hand sanitizer. Uh, it's totally natural handcrafted organic natural i really like it it's from basic earth elements i bought it from the crescent moon gifts booth and it really is nice it has such a lovely scent it does not feel sticky or anything odd on your hands it just dissolves it just totally go goes it feels so good i think it has witch hazel in it 
This is a water. Aloe, barbitus, aloe, okay, aloe leaf juice. Uh, xanthium gum. I can't pronounce that one very well, but toco furl. I don't know what this. And a proprietary blend of organic essential oils that includes basically lavender. <laughs> um, but there is supposed to be a uh, part of that blend is supposed to be witch hazel instead of some other kind of glycerin type thing. And it smells so good. This really helped because <laughs> um, they had the porta potties and not all of them had like the gel and stuff in it. And so when I saw this, I snagged it up. It was a little, it was a little bit more than I might nor normally play for sanitizer, but hey, it's all natural and I love that. So I really like it a lot. Basic Earth Essentials. All right, so that's enough. I know I've chatted your ear off. This is running a little bit longer than I intended, but I had, for the time that I spent there, I had a really wonderful time. Oh, one last thing. It's like my second or third time trying to do this video. Again, AD brain here. I found this really awesome artist, or Herb. Well, there's his last name, Herb. <laughs> uh, Leonard. He signed this for me. This is one of his series. Um, it's a color book series, Art Nouveau style, uh, fae fairy fantasy. They, he even had a dragon themed one. Um, the one called the Fairy Garden and one called Cinderella. And then there was like he had colored art as well. Oh, my favorite one was this cat in a tree, but it was a cat bat, <laughs> cat with bat wings or dragon wings. It was so cute. Um, I wish I had taken a picture of it. So one nice thing, uh, this one that I picked, the Legend no Nouveau. I really love Nouveau artwork. I have the Art Nouveau Oracle and, um, yeah, I want to get a couple other Art Nouveau pieces, but I really love Art Nouveau. Uh, this one says, explore the legends, mythology, and magic of English, Celtic, and European traditions and literature. 26 images to color and enjoy in this enchanted edition of the popular Art Nouveau series. Um, he is an acclaimed fantasy artist, Herb Leonard. I know I have heard his some, name someplace before, and I just can't remember where, but I was so happy to get one of his coloring books. It's really fun. It has, like, here's a couple. Here's the, here's the Oak and the Holly King. I'm not going to show you the whole book. Um... Here is Lancelot and Lady of the Lake. And this is the Arthurian part. And there is Guinevere. In the center, there is Lancelot and Arthur. Oh, and I've got to do a second video about the Arthur movie I just saw. Okay, I'll save that for later. And you got to get a little free bookmark when you picked, um, when you bought one of his or a few of his uh, art coloring books and he had so many other artistic pieces I wish I had gone back and gotten one of his mugs it was they're just so pretty so okay that's enough again it was a wonderful time yummy food awesome music totally cool people to hang around with um, um we had to leave a little early like I said all that stuff so I'm just going to end it there I don't want to repeat I know this is already a little long if you want to go to fairy worlds I would go it is a music effect the full fae theme, totally outrageous, everything you can think of, alternative, like little lifestyle fae. They, they, when they greet you, they say, welcome home. And if you are totally into this alternative or spiritual bent slash fae craziness, then you will love it. <laughs> Even with some little quirky things to work out, you will love it. Okay. So check it out. And I hope there are improvements and I hope we get some volunteers who take over Neverlands again and get that going. And yeah, the, f the family area was pretty good for what they did have though. Okay, bye-bye. I will post up the opening dance very soon, if not today, tomorrow. Okay, and I'm going to go to a video about the movie I just watched because there was some really cool or spiritual stuff mixed in. Okay, all right, bye-bye.